Good afternoon, it's Jim in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon. It is uh, the last week in February, and as you can see, it's a beautiful afternoon out here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a snow and ice storm came through and kind of shut the place down for a little while, but as you can see, it's, it's uh, really looking good now, so we thought we'd make a video. So anyhow, a while back, I built a little greenhouse that I never quite did too much with. It's been several months now. It's in one of the episodes. And I have now plumbed the whole thing in and made a beautiful little uh, aquaponics system, all standing, self-standing, uh, that I'd like to show you today. Starting, uh, it's going to have 150 liters of uh, expanded clay, which is basically right there. But let's, uh, let's walk into the greenhouse to start with. And you will only see probably my hands much, but I'll do what I can do to show you. This is a wonderful opportunity to see a, a flood and drain system and a bell siphon before the thing is put together. So it's kind of like one of those puzzles. We'll just take it apart. Now, if you look right down that hole, in a minute there'll be a pipe sticking out and when I go around the other side you'll see it on the other side that's just a hole with a 90 and a pipe that goes out so that's all you have and that's a schedule 80 one inch uh, bulkhead fitting now going into that we have a slip joint one inch to a three-quarter pipe this is important yeah I know it's kind of technical because we're at one inch here and then we're going to neck it down to three quarter that will make the siphon work a lot better and then we're going to neck it up with this fitting to an even bigger fitting so when the water pours over the top we got a lot of water there and it shrinks down that helps the siphon to work so anyhow that's that now there is the bell portion of a bell siphon it's just a cap on here you need those grooves just like i did Going to fit down on there like so. Over the top of that, you've got this three inch pipe, and this is going to keep the clay from getting in there. If you don't drill those holes in there, it won't work. I know that because I tried it once and it didn't work. <laughs> so, trust me, remember the hole. This goes down, and that's going to sit right on the bottom. Now, the only other thing you've got, this cap actually goes on this way. We fill it with rocks or the heavier thing you can find the better and that holds it all down now the next step is just to pour the expanded clay all around here so you can see you got to be real careful to keep weight on that because there's nothing holding it down but what you have here and if it gets away from you you'll have to start over again anyhow uh, that is a bell siphon on to this is the incoming water that you'll see where it comes from in a while uh, and a valve to control and you adjust the flow to where you get the flow about how you want it and everything starts to work. Uh, that's about all I got for in here. Oh, this is, uh, there's an exhaust system in here. This is uh, inline exhaust so you can, in the summertime when it gets too hot, you can get the exhaust out of here. So that's about all we've added. Uh, let's go on around to the front. So I'm going to jump around here. Here's our new, call it a tank or a pond or whatever you want to call it. This is a uh, 300 gallon baling galvanized stock tank. <clears throat> it's eight feet long, three feet wide and two feet deep. Holds uh, right around 300 gallons. So it will make a perfect little pond. Uh, the way it's plumbed in, here we have a 1,200 gallon an hour pump, the little giant pump. Uh, you'll notice it's sitting on top of a place where we can have the fish hide, but it's always important to keep your pump maybe mid-level in the pond because it keeps all the crap off the pump. And also if something goes wrong and your pump doesn't know it and it wants to pump the whole thing dry, it'll only go that deep and then you won't kill your fish. So that's, and that happens, trust me. Uh, over here we have a larger hiding place for fish and on top of it, a uh, plant basket. We're gonna have 
plants in here that uh, the roots are under the water and the plant will grow up. Iris, among other things. Uh, we'll see what we can get, probably two or three different ones that look really nice in the summertime. Uh, I have two of these and they're gonna go a little deeper. This is a really good size to plant a water lily in. So we're gonna plant a water lily in one of these. And in the other one, we're gonna plant, I think a water hawthorn, which is kind of like a little water lily, only it, uh, it blooms more in the fall than in the spring. So they kind of go opposite each other. Uh, one thing you gotta know is if you put bluegill in your pond, they will tear up your water lilies. So be aware. Uh, Anyhow, the water coming out of here comes down this pipe, 1,200 gallons an hour. So you're turning over, uh, you can do the math. Uh, the water we don't need inside there, we'll recirculate through these pipes. We just adjusted pressure on everything so we get it balanced the way we want. The, uh, the hole we look down on the other side it's connected to this pipe right here. So every 10 minutes or so, when the water comes up and dumps in the bell siphon, it's gonna dump here. So this end will have a lot of water. These constantly dumping and this dumping every 10 minutes or so. And this side will be where they can, fish can hang out and chill. So anyhow, that's uh, just about the whole system. Uh, so for the tip of the day today, it's kind of a double tip tip one part of the day is if you're putting in a pond or a tank whatever you want to call this make absolutely sure that you've done everything in your power to get it level as close as you can uh, put sand in pound it down pay more attention to level than you ought to just do that and you'll be a lot happier that just a little off level on eight feet and you're going to have water the wrong way and the other part of it, which is, I've built four ponds in my life, uh, so I know this from experience. If you build a pond, make sure you can get to the back side of it. Because if, if you build an eight foot pond up against a wall and there's something in the middle of you know, the other side of the pond, you just can't get to it. So this pond is built so I can come around this way and I can come around this way and I can actually reach over this one is so skinny, which is what makes it really nice. Actually, it fits in a regulation flower bed, by the way. So you got to get to this stuff and you got to get to the water lilies and give that a whole lot of thought and you, it, you'll be happy. So anyhow, we'll see you next time.